second street. That's it. <laughs> I, I was listening to the song earlier so I could be like, I'm going to learn the song so mm-hmm. I can learn it. And then in between two hours ago and now I've completely forgotten. Welcome back to another episode of Showgaze Musical. Okay. This this week, this this uh, today, the one that you're listening this to today. in your earbuds right now, we are talking about 42nd Street, which, as some of you may know, is number 13 on AFI's top 25 best musicals of all time. Was anyone else shot? This was everyone's first time watching this film, right? Yes. Yes. Was anyone yes. halfway through the movie and they were like, when does the musical <laughs> begin? Yep. <laughs> yes, we will get to that. Yeah. <laughs> Because I was like, this is so high ranked for top 25 musicals of all time. And I was like, we- okay. Because there's no reason. <laughs> Before okay. we get even into 42nd Street, we got to check in with the girls. You may have heard his, his husky tones. Dulcet tones. We, have, we Dulcet. have Brandon once again with us, uh, visiting again from last year when we did, what did we do? Top hat. Top hat. Top, top hat. hat. That's right. That's right. Welcome back, Brandon. Thank you so much. New uh, <laughs> new regular member of the Impulverse, if I do say oh, so. Oh, yeah. We, we roped her in. <laughs> sister, you know, our sister pod. We just keep growing this this pyramid scheme. And so now Brandon mm-hmm. will have to refer to three other hosts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to talk to you about my monthly tithing. And, um, and, they, <laughs> and they, too, can be their own girl boss. <laughs> uh, Brandon, how have you been in a year? Yeah. Anything changed? Anything mm. like, in the world of musicals? Anything new? In not in, not in the world of musicals, but um, plenty else has changed. But that's a different podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh. um, Molly, how are things with you? Excellent. Molly, are you yeah. well this March first? I I sure am well. I went on a a little weekend <laughs> trip or just a day trip to Julian, uh, California on Sunday. <gasps> we a little, know. little mining town. Julian oh, Marsh, uh, California. Not related to the Julian that we kn- know that. that was no, from I, just thought, I thought Julian was where the 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 lighthouse that they filmed no, Pete's Dragon. Pete's was. Dragon. No, no, no. <laughs> no. I was up in the mountains west of San Diego. It's a it's a oh, okay, an okay. old mining town. Apparently, it's the where they started the third gold rush, and I got to do a tour of a mine. It was wait really cool. west of the mountains, west of San Diego. I'm sorry, Isn't East. I ocean? always do that. For some <laughs> so the ocean. East I was in Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> the city of Atlantis. I do that, and my siblings do that, and they're always like, "Well, they moved here from Boston, so they're always like, it's because we're used to like the coast thing." And I'm like, I have no excuse. I never lived on the East Coast. I don't know why yeah. I think things that are away from the ocean should just be west. That's just what well, my brain my, says. It you lived be. on the third coast. You lived in Chicago. That's Everything true. was west. Yeah. So there, there you go. go. That's why. Lake is east. Lake Michigan. Fam- yep. Famously, someone said la- the lake is east. The lake is. I don't east. remember who yeah. said that. RJ, how someone are you today? Living. We have a hard out, so I'm trying to rush oh. through. <laughs> Who are you? Transitions are fantastic. That's why he started with immediately what our takes were in the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing well. Um, I submitted for a film festival this, this weekend. And so uh, we I was like filming little like submission videos and a pitch. And I finally submitted it's, it. So. It, those are different from his normal submission videos that he filmed. Adam. That's a separate, Adam, um, Adam. Adam. Our mother is listening to this podcast. Your, your mother is, is listening that, to this Is that why podcast. I'm here tonight? <laughs> oh, girl. Um, and anyway, I'm doing okay, too. Thank you. I was sick this weekend. Adam was sick this oh, weekend. Sorry. And he was so loopy that he let his hair grow out. <gasps> and he Well, was, my hair didn't grow out because of the sickness. My hair did you have to miss growing. a haircut? No, I just am. My hair grows very slowly. It's not. I'm it's like not the like opposite me, of RJ. Yeah. He has to get his haircut can't, every three weeks. Can't relate. Yeah. Can't relate. I, <laughs> I'm every like two months. Basically, is when I get a haircut. Yeah, yeah I'm every woman. Yeah. Um, and I'm every woman, and it is <laughs> all, all, in all in you. Yeah. So anyway, we filmed. We filmed a thing for the Boys Love Show. RJ was editing it the next day, and I looked at the screen on the computer, and I was like, I look so bad. <laughs> in this video, I went out and got a haircut the same day. I was like, wow. it's got it. We got to be done. Chop it off. Chopped chopped those curly cues get them out of here i know it's tough okay speaking of curly cues rj mm-hmm. um you this week are challenged to give us the one minute summary of uh, a movie in which there are many curly cued ladies with many <laughs> curls a, a yes, plenty curls right. i thought that's um, where you would go it, it, it many works. pretty ladies you could say um oh. uh please summarize in a minute or less the su- the plot of for- 1933's 42nd street and your time start where's the clock is there a clock oh it's right here and your time starts now you have to switch tabs 
So that oh, you have to read it. <laughs> yes. During the Great Depression, Broadway producers Jones and Barry are back to put up a new musical, Pretty Lady, financed by the rich Abner Dillon, who is involved with the star of the show, Dorothy Brock. Julian Marsh is the director, although his doctor warns him, warns him about going into another stressful show that could be risky for his health. During the show's casting, a fresh actress, Peggy Sawyer, becomes part of the show, along with two experienced actresses, Lorraine and Anne. Marsh finds out that Dorothy has a secret relationship with her former vaudeville partner, Pat Denning. Pat ends up meeting Peggy, and they flirt, but Pat gets roughed up by gangsters hired by the director to keep him away from Dorothy and not ruin the show's success. Pat and Dorothy agree to not see each other. The show continues to rehearse and move to Philly for their tryout, and Dorothy sees Pat, Pat again, who she catches being friendly with to Peggy. She drunkenly confronts the two before breaking her ankle before the show's opening, two before, and Peggy is chosen to take the lead. Before they open, the male lead, Billy Lawler, who has been helpful to Peggy in the show, confesses his feelings, and Dorothy even wishes her well before her performance to say, to, before Peggy's performance to say that her and Pat will get married. The show opens, it's a hit, and the director, who's been very hard on the cast, overhears that Peggy should get all the credit for the show's success, not him. And that was one minute, just over a minute. I will say, okay, go flip back to the notes. Miss Gemini, okay, which is Google's AI, mm. uh, without my, without us asking for it, he was like, I can do this better. Let me summarize, uh, let me summarize the movie. So he- Coming to your local show gaze, all AI all based, AI based content. <laughs> content. So AI. moving forward. So this is our- this is our this is our competitor, <laughs> Gemini. Wait, did you summary. try it and see what it came up with? No, it took the notes that we've entered in the yeah. doc, and on the side it says, "This is the summary of this document." Oh, so you couldn't what, just say like summarize the movie forty seconds. I straight. could. Okay. I just haven't done it, but. But this was just tune, tune in next, tune time. In next, next week. Time. Yeah. yeah, next time. So this is Gemini summary. Forty Second Street is a 1933 American musical film directed by Lloyd Bacon and starring Ruby Keeler, Dick Powell, and Victor Moore. The film tells the story of a young chorus girl who becomes a star overnight when the leading lady of a Broadway musical breaks her ankle. I don't know if Gemini That's- came up with this because I'm pretty sure that was the exact description on the Apple on Apple TV. Oh, when we read today. oh, hmm. I'm pretty sure. Oh, it was accurate. Yeah. It is accurate. Maybe they're all written by the same AI. Sure, mm. Probably. Yeah. Um, great job, RJ. Thank you. And RJ, would you like to tell uh, how 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 much did you have to rely on a plot summary? A lot. Maybe. I'm going to be very honest. I, I was uh, falling in and out of sleep watching this movie. Uh, and you I know mean, what would have helped? More musical numbers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I will often especially with like some of the older ones that we've done that are like not the most compelling, I will have trouble Mm. sustaining my attention. And this one, I think it was less that problem and more like it just simply washed immediately out of my brain. (laughs) It just just left as soon as it came I woke up this morning and I was like, what? Did we watch a movie? Yeah. (laughs) It's almost too like linear. (laughs) Like there's Mm. just not a lot to it there's not to like oh, there's, no draw you in. Yeah. there's no plot twists i it like felt a little too slice of life like i yeah. was like you gotta spice up a little bit like, truly, like, the, I the don't numbers, want, yeah. missing so many musical numbers also yeah. did not help at all yeah i don't want to like push us too far ahead but like what was this movie about like what <laughs> <laughs> what did they want me it's a great to question. Know i think that is actually a good discussion to have because as someone who like really knows the stage musical version of this yeah, yeah. I feel like I could answer that, but it would not at all be about the plot. About the movie. Interesting. I, <laughs> I think okay, it's I wanna... about something with the way it ends, but I don't yeah. know if it knows it's about something with the way it ends. <laughs> like the the relationships are not. The, I don't know. I, what you're getting yeah. at seems like it's about the relationships, but to me, like that's like nothing to me in this film. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I want to put a pin in that, but I want to know out of curiosity now: was the stage show written first? And this is an no. adaptation. No. Okay, stage show was a continuation it of was, the yes. movie. Book, movie, stage musical. Oh, book. oh, a oh novel? yes, honey. A book. Oh, a novel. Oh, yeah. oh yes, a honey. Book in the, a, book. a book in the a book, a book in the book sense. A book in the book sense. Novel sense. Novel sense. Yes. In the sense of a book. Okay. In the sense of a book. <laughs> um, Brandon, <laughs> you've already a little bit spoiled. Mm. What is your yeah. relationship to this? If not movie musical, what's your relationship to the musical in general? The musical, yeah. I, I this was my first watch as well with with you all for for tonight. But my relationship with this show is I saw the early two thousands revival on Broadway, um, so that was like my first look at it. And then I performed in a local production of it once when I was in high school. Wow! wow. Yeah, I will go. And now next. you have to you have to guess. 
Who? I you played? Yeah. You played Peggy for sure. Oh, for sure. God. I have to remember. I have to remember names, unfortunately. I know, I don't remember oh, any. Yeah, this isn't going to work. Were you, were you the, the rich guy that Dorothy gets with? <laughs> were you the juvenile? Were you, no, I bet. Lawler? I, no. no, I bet you were the guy who Lorraine was with. So, like, the, like, choreographer's assistant, I think, or something like that? Oh, were you, oh, were you Andy Lee? That. Uh-huh. You were Andy Lee, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, the choreographer. You know, I'm like a nice, next. like featured role. Like, I am mm. never a lead. I am. Ne- I'm not even a supporting. I'm probably not even mm. eligible for featured performer. But I'm just. I'm showing up. I have a couple yeah, lines. A couple I lines. am going to perform in every number. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I yeah that's my connection say, to the show. My connection is very similar in that I also saw the revival in the early 2000s on, on Broadway. the Broadway. I believe it was the same trip in which uh, it was my first trip back to New York post 9-11. So I did have to tie it back to 9-11 Why? somehow. Why do you do that? Um, when did this joke even start? It's not a joke. It's not a joke okay. for some of us. Oh my, my God. God. Some of us take real historical events very seriously, Molly. <laughs> Jesus. No. Um, never, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Oh my God. No, yeah. So I thought because it was like it was like I think the first time my mom and I had ever done like the TKTS booth, and it was like forty dollar tickets or something. Absolutely, like very early. Were they forty two dollars? They were probably forty two dollars. Yeah, and we were in the very back row. And but imagine that nice printed ticket with forty two bucks. Like that would be like the best souvenir. Mm. Oh, forty two for forty second. Um, but speaking of featured roles uh, i've never been in 42nd street um but i was in kiss me kate which i feel like has a very similar energy to what's going on with 42nd uh-huh. street hmm. um and when i was in kiss me kate i played the role of the dance captain i to be clear i was not the dance captain that's a different mm. person yeah i was the role of the dance captain and i wore a i wore brown trousers and like a white or like an off-white under sh- or, uh, like long sleeve shirt with a brown um, like argyle sweater vest moment mm. and in, and a brown ascot. I was gonna and I was, I was gonna like, guess so it was very clearly I was the gay. <laughs> I was gonna guess suspenders. <laughs> no, not suspenders. Surprisingly. Mine was I definitely I like on... a nice high waisted wool pant with suspenders, but they were like famously the pair of pants I would wear in like every production. They were like mm. the gray wool pants I wore in Fiddler. Oh, yeah. I yeah. wore in Forty Second Street. I wore in the music band like. That was just the pair of pants I wore. That happened to me in college and in high school. That happened a lot to me too. I was like, okay, same brown pants. Yeah. (laughs) I love when actors describe in minute detail an outfit that they wore on stage like 10 years ago. And you just think about all of the work you do as like a director and a drama educator to be like, don't worry about your costume. It's not about that. (laughs) And you just know it never sinks in on any level. It's all that anybody's thinking about. Because it's a little bit about it. I mean, it's not about it, but it's the fun part of it. I mean, if we really want to get like, like sentimental for me it was like oh i feel cute in these pants like ooh, look they're skinny oh, yeah. like it was very that and so i was like can i wear those yeah that was me but whatever um molly do you have a connection to 42nd street i don't have any connection first time watching any version of it and all i knew going in was that i believe it's a famous tap musical that's what i had heard about the stage show mm-hmm. rj uh i just remember seeing the clip from the tonys that always played at Sidetrack. Yes. I believe it's where in the, the money. Tonys. I think it, I think it's where in the money. I yeah. believe so. So that's of the stage. Are show, they dancing on dimes. But that's of the stage. Yes, show. they're the big yeah. dimes. Mm-hmm. I, it's like oh, a very God. vivid so memory good. from my childhood. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> Yes, it's so good. <laughs> well, because when Brandon and I were kids, dimes used to mean something. <laughs> Not these crypto, not these crypto nonsense oh anymore. No, what are they going to dance on next year's revival? Where I'm going to dance on a Bitcoin or something. <laughs> We're in the Bitcoin. <laughs> somebody should do. Somebody should do a parody reimagining of Forty Second Street, but set in 2042. Okay. That's okay. like a, a Broadway backwards number. We can work on it. Great. Um, this movie, as we have already alluded to, it's based on a book called Forty Second Street, uh, written by. Oh, I should have written this down. I just put the link of the... Hold on, let me open it. I put the link to the novel, a PDF version, it's fully in the notes. So it will be in the show notes if okay. you want to read it. Um, it's written by Bradford Ropes. It came out in 1932. Um, and apparently in the book, uh, Julian Marsh, who's the director, and what's his name? The juvenile, Billy Lawler. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's They're uh, gay lovers. <gasps> oh, scandalous. In the book. In the book. Um, so that's mm-hmm. cool. 
Shout out to gay people. Let's talk. We should talk about it. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> um, however, the movie, which is uh, a, a different uh, media, directed by Lloyd Bacon, screenplay by Ryan James and James Seymour, uh, produced by Daryl F. Zanuck. It stars Warner Baxter as Julian Marsh, B.B. Daniels as Dorothy Brock, who looks exactly like B.B. Newworth, by the way. <laughs> like, exactly like B.B. Newworth. Uh, George Brent plays Pat Denning. Uh, Una Merkel plays Lorraine Fleming. Ruby Keeler in her debut role plays Peggy Sawyer. Guy, Bi- Ki- Guy Kibbe plays Abner Dillon. Ginger Rogers plays Ann Lowell, also known as Anytime Annie. Um, Dick Powell plays Billy Lawler. Ned Sparks plays Barry. I don't know who that is. Uh, George Eastone plays Andy Lee. And Alan Jenkins plays McElroy, who was the um somebody i think he was the second one that would say cut or mm. like hold whatever anyway was he not the one that roughed up pat no no i don't think any of them roughed up pat i think that they're not even labeled here in this they list don't have of, names they're unnamed okay yeah uncredited uh cinematography by soul polito it is edited by thomas pratt and frank ware the music is by harry warren and the lyrics are by al dubin production company and distributed by warner brothers pictures uh, it was released on March 11th, 1933. Its running time is a swift 89 minutes. <laughs> yep. Just like uh, us tonight. Just like us tonight. <laughs> just like us tonight. We're gonna beat. We're gonna beat the runtime of this film in this podcast. Wow. Um, the budget is 439 thousand dollars. The box office is 2.3 million. It was the highest grossing film of 1933. It wow. saved Warner Brothers from bankruptcy. Um, do you and think it's, they? Do you think they marketed it as a musical? <laughs> oh. It's actually okay. So it's actually really interesting because by this point in, in Hollywood, they had transitioned from the talk. They transitioned into the talkies, which is when like they boomed with musicals because they were like, we can put music in it. Yeah. And then there was such an onslaught of musicals that they've started like being like musicals are old hat. So th- actually, Forty Second Street kind of brought back movie musicals mm-hmm. to some degree a little bit. Oh, okay. Hmm. I don't think they ever really went away in the way they went away in like the '90s, where it was yeah. like nobody's sure. doing movie musicals. Yeah. But, um. This is pre-code era. I do want to say that technically the Hollywood code started in 1930, but it wasn't really enforced until 1934. So this kind of squeaks by right before it. The Hayes um, there Code? Are, the Hayes Code, yeah. Okay. It's the officially the Hollywood production code. Mm. Um, but uh, uh, Hollywood Associated Production Code? Something like that. Um, there are a few things in this movie that I noticed that I would, I was like, oh, this, I, I, even before I looked it up, I was like, I bet this is pre-code because <laughs> there's the part when she holds out her shoes when they're yeah. on the train oh, that was crazy. and she, and she like drops them because she's receiving cunnilingus. Let's just say it. <laughs> we all know that that's what's going on. Um, wow. There's that. There was, um, I just feel like that whole scene. There was a, there was a lot actually. There were a lot of innuendos in here. I oh my god! The fact you, that her name was Anytime Annie, I was like, yeah. Jesus, <laughs> because she's her. ready to go on at any time. Obviously, Adam, that's the no, only thing that can clearly. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Give her some credit. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was fun. Uh, this Miss movie was nominated for Best Picture and Best Sound. It did not win either at the sixth Academy Awards. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> um, and this is Busby Berkeley's first of five back-to-back musicals for warner brothers wow and this kind of cemented his run as like king of whatever and he was actually a weekly like he was paid per week when this movie started and then they filmed the 42nd street number and they upgraded his like contract to an actual studio contract because they were so impressed with what he did wow this is Um, also our first bob speed berkeley show yes. right this or is our first Busby Berkeley. yeah mm-hmm. we've referenced things scenes in other musicals that are references to him but i don't think we've seen an actual busby berkeley yeah i would say busby berkeley is probably in terms of movie musicals he has some of the most infamous iconography that people yeah. like still reference today mm-hmm. um so that's cool um in the, I just found this one little fact on IMDb. I thought it was fun. At the end of 42nd Street, Billy and Peggy pull down a curtain or shade with the word asbestos written on it. This can be oh, yeah. a confusing reference to 21st century viewers who may only be familiar with asbestos as a mineral composite, which is now known to cause the lung cancer mesothelioma. But during the first part of the 20th century, asbestos was an often used flame retardant component in building materials. It also would have been a reference familiar to theater people since live performance theaters were at the time required to have a curtain made of asbestos that would separate the stage from the audience in the event 
event of an onstage fire. In that context, the presence of the curtain in the film is, a, is the movie's way of implying that whatever Billy and Peggy are about to do behind the curtain, it will surely be hot. Oh. Wow. So there's more haze code nonsense. Pre code, she said. Pre code. Pre code. Um, that's all I have. That's it. This movie is so old, I can't be like, <laughs> here's the other movies that came out that week. Yeah. Um, because yeah. people. No box were, office beaters. <laughs> yeah. Because people were still enjoying, you know, playing jacks on the street. So, <laughs> one, um, one film at a time. We play yeah. jacks sometimes in my after school program, and it's great. It's still, you know what? I see that for you, Molly. I do. Yeah. (laughs) You take that however you want to take that. Damn. But that's all we're going to do for pre-show or pre-talk. And now we're going to move into 40 Seconds Street. Okay. That's not WB. That's not WB, no. No, I don't think think we get that. Um, this Molly, Molly, yeah. let's start with Molly. Okay. Thoughts, thoughts on 40 seconds. Thoughts on this feminist film. Uh, uh there are women in it. Um, <laughs> I don't, I said this before. I don't know what this movie is about. It's about, um, yeah. I, as we've said many times, was waiting for the musical to start. Uh, I especially was waiting for the dancing to start because I knew we were having Brandon on because it was a dance movie. <laughs> and I, I yeah. was growing increasingly I was, I, was, I was invited to share my expertise. Yeah. Where are the, where are the numbers? I don't where know. are the numbers? Where's I the really technique? Like, Where's the... Th- like, where I really just, like, lost it was when they all come on with the... Um, at the at the very end, they're doing pretty pretty girl the the musical. <laughs> I was a pretty, pretty woman. Lady. I'm sorry, pretty pretty lady. Different they're doing a different musical. Well, that's a different thing. 2016 pretty girl. That would be musical. great. Pretty no, woman. we have to talk about pretty woman. The musical would actually slap. That would be so good. Okay. Well, anyway, as a movie, Molly, it exists. It is. It is um, a movie. It is a, a musical. It's a musical. Pretty woman, pretty woman is a musical. Is a- Yes, they turned it into and like within the last like five years. <gasps> I have to listen. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Later. <laughs> anyway, in this movie, there's a scene at the end. We're getting a lot of. I mean, we are getting sequences at least at the very end because they're putting on a show. Yes. We're seeing sequences in the show where mm-hmm. they all come on with like cardboard cutouts of a cityscape, <laughs> and I was like, ah, this oh. is this is it. They're gonna be, they're gonna the have stairs. them, and then we're gonna like lift them up, and you're gonna see their little feet tapping, and it's gonna be a whole. <laughs> oh, no. 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 Nope. They just oh, pulled have the you, cardboard. Have you even have you seen like clips of a stage production of Forty Second Street? I probably have, but I not like okay. that I can I'll, identify. I'll have some post post work for you. Okay, it's amazing. <laughs> Honestly, Molly, the movie that you thought this movie was going to be sounds, sounds great. Amazing. Sounds good. Know, there <laughs> are yeah. listen, just happy. to like to pull it back for you later. There yeah. are pro shots that are great. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Some makeup so, tutorials anyway. on YouTube. Some makeup tutorials on YouTube. Um, <laughs> Tap tutorials. Yeah. Tap tutorial. But it was it was instead a mostly straight show about some straights. It was about yeah. <laughs> it was about a woman who's cheating on I actually I thought that the rich guy was her husband, but I think just her boyfriend. Yes. And I think, MC, I think yeah. it, there it is. Yeah. Her what? Financier. A patron. I understood that there was a financial yeah. arrangement involved, but I thought that they were married until he showed up with Ginger mm-hmm. Rogers, and then I was like, "Oh, that was that was a fast divorce." So I, I guess they were married. <laughs> um, and then, so like one woman who is like, I guess, I guess her story is being like torn between love and money, and then like a the ingenue who's never been in love before who gets her big break. I guess is like what it's about, but like, what is it saying about any of that? I don't know. It to me felt I thought that it was gonna be like we're showing you different things that could happen in putting a show together. Yeah. Because it did feel that there were so many storylines happening that I'm like, oh, this is just like life and times of people that put on show, a show. Show within know? a show. Yeah. Well yeah. the story behind the people that make the show. But, you know, behind the curtain. Yeah. Literally. Behind the asbestos curtain. Behind, behind, behind the, asbestos. the episode <laughs> subtitle right there. Yeah. <laughs> So I did feel like that was kind of it. it I said that like it was like a slice of life because it felt like there was something deep in like you could get into deeper with all of the like different characters of like, you know, um, 
obviously like Bert, where Peggy came from, the this dying director, I guess. So. Does not pay off whatsoever. <laughs> You're expecting the whole movie for this man to keel over dead, and then he just... It was surprising to yeah. me that that was such a heavy a plot heavy line. Yeah. The, like, the idea that the show is so stressful that it's going to like just you know lead him to his end. But he needed but to he yell at them. It. He, he needed to yell at them yell. so much, and they needed a reason for him to be yelling so much. But and also, it was so, so about how, like, can we talk about how uh, we're all traumatized uh, by directors yelling. Oh, yeah. so oh, yeah. the, the thing, though, is like the least believable part of this is that a production would have like forty women and forty men in the court, like. No production would actually be that big. I right? don't know. No, it would be 80 women and days. four men. That's what yeah. it would be. There you go, that too. Yeah, if they can even find 40 men, you know how to top it. Is. They're also so committed to the 40 thing that that's actually how they get Peggy into the show is that the guy who wants her to be in it we need pretends, a 40th person uh, pretends to miss only Mel. cast 39 women yeah. and then but that's like, oh, the, she's over there. Yeah. Yeah. In, in, the, in the stage production, she's just so great that she like, which cast. rather makes sense because how would she get cut in like the second round and then she's so yes. good that she's the only one that can step up and do the lead role when Dorothy quits like yeah. what and why is why is she asleep on a couch there was a point where I was like is <laughs> this a right. different they cut like, out. I thought it was yeah. different. I, I thought, thought they were mannequin different... legs I thought they I know, were mannequin and... legs <laughs> oh my gosh well there was like I mean the whole like leg bit too I did not like that oh, I mean, obviously. so gross off I mean what they just have I the women Beautiful. I think <laughs> women's games. I really or, think are yeah, nothing like a dame, right, Adam? I I think that we should talk about that. We should. We should. No, I just think we should explain for the audience because I'm hoping that most of you have not seen this movie. That that there's a sequence where when they're getting cast for the show, the met the first thing they do is they just say like, okay, line up and then hike up your skirt so that we can see your legs. I mean, not like a crazy high, but like yeah, it's a, a it's scandalous. Like, knee. I mean, it's high. It's yeah. high for the nineteen thirty. Three. Yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, it's so bizarre that they like they don't have the scene where Peggy actually gets cut and has any like emotional reaction. It's like a Greek tragedy version of it or something where they're like, well, that's <laughs> happened off screen. Like the payoff of the moment would be seeing her devastation at getting cut and then the ingenue be, or what's the juvenile being like oh hide over here I have a plan like you gotta set up the yeah. whole there's, no, the sub, whole there's no set up for anything no. <laughs> everything just accidentally happens and there is a little bit of like that's there's, well, I think that's a good assessment yeah. there's so much of this movie that I feel like I was like oh so many people maybe not now but like as Hollywood bloomed through the 20th century, so many people are referencing, or there's just like something about this movie that I was like, oh, this feels like everything is like a little derivative of this in the mm. like, the like ingenue that comes out of no, like there's just, and I, I, I'm sure there's like historically other plays and stuff that are, that are about, about that, this, yeah. but it's, it's so early Hollywood of just like, this is the star. The, base. the fact that this girl, it was like her first role in a Hollywood movie ever also, like that's uh. another part of it that's like, Something feels very like the story everybody loves to tell about Lana Turner getting getting cast from like the sitting at the sitting at the soda <laughs> shop or whatever. The, the classic boomer hiring story. Yes. yes. Yeah. I was just sitting there and someone offered me a job. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but why can't you buy a house? Yes. It's so easy. Oh my gosh. Uh, all you gotta do is just ask for a loan. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. You just ask and they'll give it to you. Um but the question I really want to ask, because I do think it fine, whatever, the movie's very strange and it's definitely not what I thought it was. And I do think maybe I was hindered in what I thought of this movie because I had a four kind of knowledge of what I thought this yeah. movie would be. So when it didn't mean that, I was like, oh, oh, was it bad? Yes. <laughs> I was going to say it's not I, good. I, I mean, it could it's be because it could have been a good movie that's not a musical. I, I was ready to accept mm. it being a movie with music. But again, with the relationships, I do not know what they wanted me to take yeah. away from the relationships. Or, or feel or who they wanted. Who are you rooting for? Like, right. Yeah, I didn't even know. Like, do I want Dorothy to be with Pat? Or like, is it about how she should kick both these guys to the curb? Or like, or like maybe she yeah. should just stay with the rich guy because like, what, I, like that's going to be more advantageous in her I life. I don't know. I think like... Uh, in in the stage version, yeah. <laughs> in the stage version, um, I think actually. The, like, the yeah, actually, in the 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 Peggy and Dorothy relationship does get a lot more attention, and okay. that feels 
that feels important. And you actually, some of the same lines like that show up in the later script on stage do come from this, the, like the line of like, go out there and, you know, do so good. I'm going to hate you or something like, but it's like, there's like so much more to it. Whereas like in the movie, the only real convert that like, we, we don't really have any moments between Dorothy and Peggy until like Dorothy's been Way injured. Late. Like I'm not spoiling yeah. anything, yeah. but in the like, in the stage production, you get so much more buildup. Like Peggy gets cast and Dorothy's like, who the heck is this? They like bump into each other during rehearsal. Like there's all these like little things that build up and then you see like the handoff and it's like, you know, my time is done. It's now, you know, you take yeah. the rain. Like it's just so much mm. more you're meaningful. S- yeah. You're so right that like really the emotional core is the scene where Dorothy says like that she's be- she is rooting for Peggy. Like, cause you're expecting yes. her to be That's mad like and the, she's yeah. like, no, yes. actually I'm and then like, you see root the, for you. Like, you see her her true, you know, heart show yeah. in that moment. But yeah. like, it feels like it no comes out of up. nowhere in the movie. Because <laughs> no. you're like, who are these two women to each other? I have no idea. So I do think it was a successful adaptation to stage. Anyways, yeah. but <laughs> things, but I think things like that just give it a lot more meaning. And the other, the other, I think thing that just is more effective is they, are, they use all of these numbers and more, but they like sprinkle them throughout. And so you yes. kind of, you're seeing like one version of like young or, uh, what is it? You're, you're seeing like one of the songs you're, you're gonna, gonna be having with me like everything. during rehearsal instead of the, but really you just get That's all the final here. So there's just it. there's no build up. Yeah. There's it's, in anything. I, there were so many scenes where it was like them dancing or whatever, and I was like, and then you're gonna show us them actually doing it. But no, it's always like no. we're just starting or just ending a dance sequence. Mm-hmm. We never yeah. exactly see them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this movie though. And then I'm curious to hear RJ's thoughts. I think this movie, though, is from that. Okay, so famously during like the 30s and 40s, it was only movies that were being 30s, I should say more specifically. It was only movies being made. There was like television didn't exist as a medium yet. So all production efforts were going into making movies. There were actually way more movies made back then. There even are released in theaters, at least today, because they would just like be so quickly made and just like Mm -hmm. shot out there. Um, There was a level of this. So. I, I think it's very clear or not, maybe not very clear, but I think it's interesting that this movie made so much money and it, it saved the company. Mm-hmm. I'm It feels like they were not expecting this to be a massive hit, which a, apparently it must've been to some degree. So I felt like it was like, Oh, it was just one of those. We're just making another movie. It's one of those things that I feel like we've talked about on this pod before where it's just like these studios will just make a movie. And then all of a sudden, like, it's surprisingly good and they don't know what to do with it. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. There was one that was I it Top Hat? There was some <laughs> or was it um There was something last year where it was like What was the movie that they the premiere was like at the city that it was about? Mm. Was it St. Louis? Oh yes. Me me and St. Louis. Maybe. I think we did talk about it premiering in St. Louis. But there was another one that was like they had to re- they put out after it won the best pick what did one best picture something won and then it sheepishly like i don't I, something i i'm mixing up all the movies we've watched my head. I'm, so <laughs> yeah. sorry. I'm so sorry this is the most boring Can't imagine. podcast Can't imagine ever that's why we need the showcase redditors yes. to to rise come on <laughs> Do- um, dr antonio dr adam i know you're listening and i know you are on reddit please make it i reddit. feel like this movie the movie is just about her having all these circumstances happen to her and still she ends up on top at the end of the day. And it's Peggy. supposed to be like mm. a Peggy, sorry, okay. yes, specifically. But we don't see her react to any of them. <laughs> yeah. I really feel like this movie is missing No, I don't think this woman, I don't think this movie is like, interested right? in a woman's perspective in this any way. Character, so yeah, this character <laughs> has the emotional range of a teaspoon. Like, I don't know what she feels about anything. Well, because the, the only character that feels like they have emotional depth is... I guess a little bit. What's her name? Dorothy, uh, Dorothy Brock. Dorothy. But mostly, yeah. I think yeah, it's Julia sure. Marsh, the director, who's supposed to be like introspective or something. But like, it's, there's something brooding. I or mean, something we do get yeah. some. We get some levels from him, though. Like, we get the like opening scene where he's talking to the doctor. We get that exchange with Andy, which we should maybe talk about. Like, yeah. there's a little bit. There's a little bit more in there, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was really my big take for the movie. Was that it was really hard to follow. It's especially hard when you're Period. sleeping through it's it. It's especially yeah. though, yeah. yes. <laughs> but on um, the moments that I was awake, I was. it wasn't even like I couldn't remember who people were. It's just 
I was getting another portion of this person's storyline that I'm like, is this adding to where this is going? This, like, oh, wait, I have, I have, I think the right analysis, which is this is a movie where it's two B plot lines in a romance happening at the same time. There is no A plot. <laughs> there is no A plot. <laughs> They're all B what? plots. It's only the simplified romances. What, they are? what are they? Just what so the we're two clear. B plots are? Yeah, let's just because some of us don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> the, the plot of Dorothy and will she choose love or money, and the plot of Peggy and whoever she's going to end up with, which is like, that's like a question but that he's asking, think, I think. I don't I think that's the, movie, the, the question the movie's asking is who does Peggy end up with? I think it's just what happens to Peggy. I think the movie's, the, the question of the movie is what happens to this girl in her life in, in this, in this show? Yes, but okay. I think that the romance is, is wrapped up in that because the scene where the director is trying to teach her how to act mm -hmm. and tells her about yep. she it has to grand, know what love grand, is grand of you to come she has to know it's what love scene. is to scene. become it's a, a full scene. capable actor is like the point of that scene and then can we I'm sorry can we just talk about that scene or are we am I totally yeah, 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 well, okay. well, okay. this is a free I don't know I said your though. podcast this is our podcast this but anyway yours, girl. okay I need to talk about this scene where the director who again has been yelling at them so much this so whole time. Much. <laughs> so she, out of atypical. <laughs> yeah, very atypical. Never seen a director yes. that. Um, Not an archetype at all. <laughs> so like as Brandon was referencing, like it's the the line is like, oh, it's so grand of you to come that she has to say to a man she's in love with and she doesn't know how to say it because she's never been in love. Okay, so uh, a good version of this movie, it would be the director would be like, haven't you ever met a man who like you light up whenever he walks in the room and blah, blah, blah. And it would be like these questions about love that would make her realize that she loves the juvenile. And I remember what his real name is. You know what I mean? Like it would like he would like take her through an emotional process that would like tell us something. It would it would create a growth and a journey for the character but instead what happens mm. is this man who's been berating this woman for six weeks straight grabs weeks. her only, only five weeks in his defense <laughs> I thought they had six from, weeks from to New put York it on to That's Philadelphia girl it was five yeah. anyways go ahead oh because we're in preview week I see I see we have, we have six weeks till the New York premiere for five weeks straight grabs her kisses her violently and then immediately she gets it because that is how love works. You just Can need I just say, any though, man to kiss you, and in this then movie's defense, you get it. The movie that Miranda, or Miranda, Jesus, sorry, <laughs> mixing up my friends, sorry. Uh, the movie that Molly has just described, of which in which a you know a level-headed director calmly reinforces acting technique to a young ingenue, <laughs> is not a movie I'm interested in seeing. I'm going to be very honest with I'm you. Not, that is not okay. drama. I'm not saying that it's I'm not critiquing it because he's too mean I think it's fine to have characters who are like toxic and mean in a movie I'm saying that mm -hmm. we don't learn anything about Peggy in the process of right. one it's offensive right. that this man just like forcibly kisses her and then it's supposed to give her some sort of insight but two the idea that like that is what should happen instead of a moment that grows Peggy's character in right. some way yeah. mm -hmm. or like a uh, I don't even think she says it to her newly in the in the musical Pretty Lady. I don't even think she says that line to her newly betrothed. Yeah. I, okay, I think she says it to a random man. It's incredibly confusing what the plot is of Pretty Lady. <laughs> well, she says it to like, lady. Man. suitor number four in the lineup. There's like, like so yeah. many, me this is my, my favorite part <laughs> of this The biggest musical chorus you've ever is, seen. <laughs> is the fact that you cannot tell in the plot of this who she's supposed to fall in love with because right. every scene that they rehearse or perform has a, a different, different man or a series of different men that's in it. Uh -huh, and frankly, uh -huh. I love that. I love and that they're I'm like, not, the I'm man is say, replaceable in this situation. I'm not here to say that all, be clear. all chorus men look like each other, but these ones all kind of did. Yeah. And, and the most intriguing part of the whole thing is the number that Dorothy does where she sings to four different men. A song about how like it has to be you specifically, but it's like four men that she's singing it mm -hmm. to. Hilarious. And then it ends with a man coming on stage dressed as Gandhi. <laughs> Oh my god. Like that was the moment. That was the moment. That I, yeah, I did think that was like I did I dream that? Have I am I in a stasis between sleep and awake that I dreamed that? This and I was like, a, no. Yeah, it's a nice it's error that you're having Adam, right now. Both Adam and I went, Oh huh? Where did he come from? And I loved it because it was it was the moment where I was like, Okay, I will give you props maybe for not not telling me what this is about so that I can just sit here so confused about what is happening in the stage it's show. Pretty late. Rita, if you have been on. saddened by recent episodes in which we have enjoyed the movies that we too, have seen, too much. don't worry don't because worry. this is the episode for you. Yep, yep. 
I just we were talking to about when Pretty Lady when they were doing the scenes and like these beautiful Busby Berkeley numbers of like yeah. the girls like dancing around these beautiful circles and Adam and I were like if you were in the audience you're not seeing any of those circles <laughs> no. because we're not watching from no. above no <laughs> I think it's or one. the shot where they like the camera goes through their legs. Through like the it's legs. All, yeah, it's very the iconic. Shot. I think yeah. Family Guy has referenced the shot. Yes. Yeah. It goes through their legs and then their faces are at the end. Yeah. And I was I like, think on stage they try to like replicate some of these and they bring in like a huge mirror. Oh. The mirror so is how I, would anyways, I think yeah. that yeah. Because That's I think they want to pay homage to some of these these shots because they but again you don't get any of that till like the last six minutes literally yeah (laughs) yeah and i I was was like checking the i was checking the like the the scrub at the bottom i was like yeah yeah that's what adam was doing what's gonna happen after this (laughs) yeah we got one hour in and nothing had happened and i was like is there another 40 second street that i was we were supposed to watch instead i was like oh shit did i do the wrong one I kept checking the date. 1933, that date's in the title, so I guess that's it. Yeah, I guess this is the one. Oh, my God. Um, oh my let's God. talk about some positives. I think we're all pro-Busby, right? It feels yes. like... Let's talk he, about these rut- routines. He had, I mean, <laughs> Busby Berkeley, he had six wives. Did you know uh, that? Yeah. Where not, is the, he? not the musical, but he had six wives. <laughs> but honestly, that would be a At great... Once? I mean, I think in his time. Oh, okay. That would be a great, uh, like, a reboot of Six in the future. And it's, it's oh, I thought you were going to say or nine. A, a sequel to The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which is a, a fiction book about, like, no, a I was still on, old I, Hollywood star that had a lot of old yeah. Or, I, I, don't know, I don't know what Busby's relationship is to these six wives, but it could be feud to Capote versus the Swans, and it's Busby ver- versus, you versus not- the wives. <laughs> You two did not Busby respond. versus the peacocks. I don't know. I sent, I sent Adam and RJ the clip of Truman Capote, of, of Bo and Yang playing Truman Capote on Weekend Update. On SNL. And, on I, weekend and update. I said, I said, oh my God, Adam was on SNL. And you did not respond. I know. Because I actually found it incredibly offensive, Molly. And how he's, under a very, he's under a very strict NDA. Look, yeah, yeah, no one loves women it. more than a gay man that hates women. It's true. That was, that was the best line. There was I mean, a that's moment like the thesis the of movie. that series. Is it not? Yes. There was a moment in the movie where I haven't I was seen like, it, but that's what Bowen and, and Matt yeah. told me on Lost the, Culture. So. The, the, the dialogue is so gay. Like the reads that they we're were giving. We're not on Forty Second Street anymore, right? We're on. No, this Cody. is not. No, we're talking about it. Making sure for the listeners who have <laughs> well, just jumped yeah, in. Yeah. No, that's what I'm talking. I'm talking about the reads of the Forty Second Street. It's oh, you like, are? yes, when they were. All, <laughs> I mean, it's a lot from Lorraine and Anne. I think like their characters, they have the best yeah, they're lines. Very, like, they're very like, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They're, but the, they, they're the little foils over there. But the, they had these one liners that I was like, did Drew and Capote write these? Cause they're just so <laughs> They're so funny. funny. There are some lines at the very beginning of this movie that their I was like, opening this scene is together really is great. funny. Yeah. yeah. Their opening scene is great. And are we going to talk about any time? Are we going to talk about who it is? Some uh, unknown, some right? unknown girl. This was her yeah, first. Yeah, we've never talked about her on this podcast. No, it took us a while to be like, "Oh, that's Ginger." <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I, oh, that I, was the only one that I immediately recognized. That was your only <laughs> reference point in this yeah, whole thing. Basically, <laughs> You're like, oh, nice, Ginger's here. <laughs> I did like Anytime Annie's character a lot, more mm. so than Lorraine's, because Lorraine's just felt like very one but note also, of like, yeah. because what, I'm in a relationship. What, you know, second lead, second lady, not leading lady, but like, you know, almost starring lady is going to show up to the director's office and say, I can't do it. You're right. Let's give it to so and so. Like, I don't <laughs> think the character where we meet of Annie the whole movie would then do that at the end. I don't know. Was, yeah, that was why? a second. It's the same thing where it's like, what? why? Why did you make this decision other than for the source material? Yeah. Like, it just doesn't build up towards that. It was, it was the second most interesting decision that, again, we had no idea what led up to it. it get, all it does is, I mean, it gets Peggy to her ending, but why? There's no... Yeah. There's no build up. And I don't even get that like Annie or Lorraine were like, we want to be the lead girl. You know, they were just like, we made the show and we're getting a check. Where and that's we it. Got, we got which booked. Would, which would make we're in the money <laughs> so much. Yeah. Mm. It's, so, it's, it's so needed in this film for that reason. Exactly. Like they need, they need something to like communicate their purpose, their yeah. like motive their drive but exactly like you said like because if all they want is the check that is solved in the first like seven minutes yeah 
<laughs> and honest God slay on Anytime Annie for getting together with this sugar daddy just Absolutely. for the purpose of him walking her dog. Like he gets her, he gets her a starring role in the musical, and she goes, "I'm not interested, but I do need you to take the dog out for a walk." And that he is needs her, great. Fifi for MVP. Yeah. <laughs> Fifi and the monocle for MVP. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, the monocle. And she just pulls the other one out. Like that's a good bit. Yeah. Truly, why? Why does that help her land the audition? Coming in character. The like accent, that. like, is the is the is the joke that she was like abroad with some guy, and that's why she has like the fake accent, or is it to make her stand out in the lineup? Like, what? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the reason is, but I will say, just on a pure comedy standpoint, I was like, I like that they just have a she just have a choice for her. They were like, she has an accent. That's that's her. It's very sketch comedy. That yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, no. very much. So. That's in the description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like monocle dog accent. Like that's yeah. all. That's like yeah. that's the like that's the the background that she got before filming. I do want. I wonder if Ginger does get to play other very comic roles like this because it was. If it felt like she was having fun, like mm. playing this role. Well, she's so wry. Like it's so. It's so. I don't know. I don't even know a better word than wry. But she's so funny in this movie. She has the best lines in this movie. It's yeah, very good. Her performance is very good. Were we impressed by anyone else's performance? I thought. Um, I thought the the juvenile lead Billy was cute, but that was pretty much it. I thought he was cute, forgettable. not talented. Dick, Dick Powell. Dick Powell. I thought he was kind of forgettable. Like, yeah, I, I mean the role was just really nothing. I the thought that Pat was, was the most memorable man in it. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I don't Dunning. know what was Pat going Dunning. on with Pat and Peggy. What was I supposed to? Yeah, because it feel about that. It felt like they were flirting, but then it also felt like does he just like taking care of her? So I think I think, I think the point was that she. So his relationship with um, Dorothy, Dorothy Brock was that he they had started in vaudeville together. He had kind of trained her, and then she had kind of Took usurped off. him in passed his in, yeah. success. Yeah, yeah, passed him, and so I felt like the the Peggy Sawyer Pat Denning thing was like it kind of rekindled that fire inside of him of like oh it's another young uh, girl that I can like teach to okay. somebody I don't think like it take, like comes to fruition in that way yeah. my wing. Yeah. I wish that we had seen him mentor her about something related to theater then but I mean I, I guess he, maybe yeah. he talks to her about it but yeah he doesn't like help her with a number or something well, like, you know, I mean the most would have been another great place movie, to put a we're number talking about, we're talking about Pat right not Billy yeah. I'm talking about Pat yes. okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. the most incredible part of this movie is when she's like you can take me out on a date or whatever right doesn't she say that and then they like the next shot is them finishing her, the date yes yeah in her like boarding where room she, he, he like drops her off at her place and then oh, he gets beat. Wait, okay. in and no, like- we have to talk about the fact that so he gets like injured or sick or something, so she brings him to her room. Well he gets beat up. He gets beat up. He gets beat up. There's a hit out. He's brought him to her room. And then the boarding house <laughs> matron a is like no, woman, that's yes. against the rules i mean okay uh-huh. well first i want to say the, how joke, yeah. the joke is amazing that as she's saying this we see a man yes. speaking There's, out of another woman's room it, it yeah. like that was hilarious. like the most that was like the best setup of the movie that I think. was, that yeah, was yeah. the best setup but peggy then says to the matron of the boarding house if he goes, I go. And I was like, girl, what, girl, are, what you are you doing? doing? Like, why would you commit Where? so hard? You just met this man. You do not care about him in this way. You have voluntarily lost your place of residence. What motivates her in that moment? I have no idea because I don't know who Peggy is as a person. <laughs> because they it's, never show us. I will say the- nothing. It's just not well developed it's the, the hardest stance she takes and there's no there's no explanation it's the only time she takes an opinion about anything and there's no consequences for it either because we don't know yeah. what it we don't know what kind came from she it either way Pat, i guess but then i don't know what happens after that yeah but then pat skips down because he gets a job in philadelphia yeah, so where's peggy staying? Like within minutes <laughs> so where is peggy staying she Peggy's back sleeping the... on the stage like well, how she was found and the, and the, and the way <laughs> they fa- just on the fainting couch <laughs> the side stage <laughs> the way they all talk about philadelphia <laughs> it's, so it's like the boonies yeah. like they're yeah. like they were talking about it you like people, get in, Atlantic City? people in 2008 talk about detroit like <laughs> that is the way that they are referring it to philadelphia Philadelphia. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the only you do get the like Dorothy reaction of like because she knows that that's where Pat is. Yeah. And if they end up there, they're going to get it's weird because 
similarly, we get this reaction from when, when Julian tells them that they're out of town tryout is actually going to be in Philadelphia. And, you know, you see the wheels spin in Dorothy's mind and she's like, Oh wait, that's where Pat is. But then as soon as she's there, she can't wait to hear from him. So it's like, does she want to see him? Does she not like absence makes but the heart grow fond? But that am I just am I really getting this movie? <laughs> I, think I thought you that, are. I thought <laughs> the reason that she like for me the reason she didn't want to go to Philly was because her whole thing was she's she's overshadowing his career. So she was worried that if she shows up in Philly oh. and has a great week, it's still oh. going to be bigger oh. than his career. Than what you are giving this. Like, you are giving. Is that not it? No, I think it's I think more about sense. she doesn't want to see. Absolutely, him. but. How much work did you do to figure that I thought, out? I mean, that makes film. sense. I didn't fall I also, asleep. Yeah. I also thought that it was like she knows that she doesn't have the wherewithal to stay away from him if she goes to Philadelphia. Maybe. Sure, that's my thought. Um, but I like Adam's explanation the best. That's a good. That's a good read. Yeah, because she sends him away because she's like, you have to have a career. Like she, I'm hindering you. Basically, that's I that's the conversation. He, well, I mean, he goes because he gets I, beat up and he needs to skip town. Like yeah. I think that's why he really goes. I thought it was more, yeah, that like you can't jeopardize this 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 show for us. I think he agrees to it for that reason, but she doesn't know about that. She doesn't know That's there's true. a hit she out on there's him. A hit. She goes mm-hmm. to his place because she's like, she feels guilty about. She's playing two roles. She's playing. The she's fact acting. that he, he's already had these conversations with her earlier in the film, where he's like, "I'm tired of being like." You you yeah. weren't able to be seen with yes. me, and yeah. so she feels bad, like she's the one holding him back. So she's like, "Go and mm-hmm. go and fly, and leave, baby Because we can't we can't be together. Because I have to be with him, this with the rich guy. Um, I do think that Pat. Maybe then our problem with the director scene with Peggy. What if that was the? That's what Pat taught Peggy, and then like yeah. realized through that they're not in love, but mm-hmm. they're both they both know more about love that Pat yes. can go back to Dorothy and Peggy can play this role. I See, love we just it, fixed the movie. We fixed fix the movie. Movie. That's the closer. Fix How would you fix the film? Uh, do we talk about any of the I do just, I mean, <laughs> we can talk about the songs, but I'm more so concerned about the ones we don't get that come later. But it just means like we need to do like a, a, a follow up on like one of the pro shots because we don't get we're in the money, which we've talked about. We don't get yes. we have not even talked about the audition scene that comes in the stage production. Do you mm, know this? Is very well, tell, line? tell us about it because the audience wouldn't know I about it either. Almost, so I'll just be an I, audience member now. Okay, I want you to experience it, but it's yeah. so good that I just have to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. But the the stage production, I think Adam will remember this. The stage production opens like this is like super famous. So I'm I'm just shocked you don't know. No, I'm just kidding. So up, the stage girl. production <laughs> opens with the curtain rising like a good two feet. Do you remember this one? Yes. And all you it's get just, is you just, just see the this is what okay, you thought I this think, movie was. I think that's yeah. where I did know it on some level because that's what I thought that the the that's like New York what you City need, buildings are like, gonna be. Yeah. And it's like you just I chills. But like yeah. that pull, that would pull you in because you're like, yes. okay, that's what this is about. This is about tap dance. Like you and said, then Sh- Shrek that's the what you musical, were expecting. Shrek the and then musical parody. When it comes it. all the way uh, up, you okay. see. <laughs> did they really? Yeah, in her tap number, they lift it up and it's the Pied Piper and it's the rats or the taps and they're wearing <laughs> little, their little feet are rats. Yeah. yeah, I never saw it, but I, uh, it was on Netflix for a while. Pro oh, shot. really? Yeah, really. Oh, anyways, that, that like you don't get audition, um, you don't get where the money, and then there is like a great Julian Marsh song that you get in the show, the the Lullaby of Broadway. It's a really good song, mm-hmm. um, which I think would round out him more if he mm. had a number Something, because yeah. all he has is yelling like you said yeah. but yes um but yeah, this isn't i mean i even quibble with the fact that this is a movie musical because the only musical numbers are just in the musical that they're doing yeah. it's not a part of the story diagetic. at all it's like diegetic yeah. yeah and it's not they're not even referencing any they're not they're not even songs that like thematically coexist with yeah. what this movie is about not at all they're just like no. songs in this show that's happening and looks sure it looks fun i love this train set that opens up that's oh super the shuffle yes. on the buffalo is really cute it's a oh, great yeah. number and it's girls cute, jumping but, off the windows mm-hmm. the little curtains oh. like it is cute it's cute if that whole 42nd street sequence actually happened on stage i would give a five minute standing ovation <laughs> like it's the con film festival what do you mean <laughs> the way for the film like oh, it's, what well, happens it's, at the end? It's, there's well, there's just so much. There's like street atmosphere. There's like yeah. It actually reminded me of Guys and Dolls a little bit, where yes. there was like a lot of things happening. And I was, I was like, West there Side is Story, no way, but... there is no way to literally mm-hmm. put this on stage in a proscenium and you be able to appreciate all the things that are happening. There are people like yeah, 
there are people like in windows and you <laughs> zoom into the window to yeah, see yeah. Like, yeah. it actually is like, a, like <laughs> i think but it's the last like two and a half minutes of the film so yes. all of us were probably like <laughs> no but no. maybe on its own it's really good wait was it was it i thought it was the beginning the part that adam's talking about I the think he's talking, you're talking about the end, right? He's like talking about the, the show at the end. Yeah, the show, the show at the end. Like the Forty Second Street number. It's I yeah, think yeah. it, it becomes like, like a, later on. Like oh, call it like, at the beginning, it's just music and the shots of Forty Second Street, right? There's something yeah, with yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I know. What you, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Or and then there's rather, like the I'm remembering the right thing, but I was putting it in the wrong place in my mind. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This movie's just so memorable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can't get enough. I can't locked get it enough. in my brain. But obviously, the Busby Berkeley of it all is really good. In the end, like we do get some really good numbers from it. Yeah. Let's let's listen to a let's listen to a little bit of shuffle off to Buffalo. Shall we? Matrimony is baloney. You'll be wanting alimony in a year or so. Still they go and shuffle, shuffle off to Buffalo. When she knows as much as we know, she'll be on her way to Reno. Well, he still has dough. She'll give him the shuffle when well, they're back from Buffalo. Right by little Nelly with a shotgun at his left tummy. How could he say no? He just had to shuffle, shuffle off the buffalo. Okay, I do love that dancing. What is the joke of belly, tummy? Like, but tummy. That's what I was wondering. Correct herself to a word that doesn't rhyme. I don't understand. Is belly risque? Was belly, yeah, was belly uh, not? Ah, maybe. Pre code? Pre code. <laughs> post code. Post- yeah, was belly post code? Um, any one of our anyone out in the 30s no yeah anyone yeah. that was alive in the 30s please write in and tell us please exactly let us know uh, check the comments <laughs> yeah we'll check the YouTube comments probably on a TikTok clip someone will let us know if it was mm, yeah, yeah very, very guys talk to Janarian here were, letting yeah, you know yeah <laughs> Um, I like this train set a lot, actually. Yes. I know I said it earlier, but I was tickled by it. And it reminded me of um, uh, White Christmas. Yes. Um, no. And also, I had to explain to RJ that this is famously Niagara Falls, which is in Buffalo, which yes. is where many, many people uh, used to take their honeymoon back in the day. Mm-hmm. That's, and I the, think you like could, that's the joke of the song, right? Or the Yes. Well, and yeah. I think you could elope there, I think, is also the idea. Like, you would go up there to get married quick. Oh, yeah. You'd shuffle off. You'd shuffle off to Buffalo to, to go get married. I also just love the characters within the number of just, like, these two women eating fruit that are just, like, talking shit about the shuffle. That they not everyone know going. at yeah. all. They just are like, those two are getting married. Let me let me just like make up a, a story real... about how dumb they are to get married. I don't know them, but like I bet this is how they got together. I think a real challenge should, him. Yeah. should be to try to like summarize Pretty Lady. Like, what is Pretty Lady about Ooh. based on everything you get? Can AI tell us? Can Gemini <laughs> tell us yeah. that? A couple that uh, gets married. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna and... try it. <laughs> Yeah, I've, the, the, I couldn't even string together a coherent anything. A couple that that because they do the Forty Second Street number. Uh, so what is she a chorus girl? Like this is the thing is like, is she a chorus girl that goes to get and gets married? <laughs> she okay. Oh, it's a it show and show, with, and show. It starts with her it's eloping. A show and show. It starts with her eloping, but then this prediction that she will eventually divorce him comes true, and because she has an affair with four different men and that's what the you're getting to be a habit with me is about is her many affairs and then after she divorces this guy that she eloped with then she has a career as a songwriter selling songs on 42nd street and that's sure. why we end on that on that number that's what happens you know how americans love a divorce musical that's like really a, a core. Before yeah. Adele, we had 40 yeah. seconds. Yeah. Yeah. That's a genre. That's yeah. a genre. <laughs> um, so that song's fun. Let's do a little bit of You're Getting to Be a Habit with Me, because why not? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Something that I could take or leave 
funny that like four of the same men yeah, <laughs> i could name you maybe a hundred songs in which it's like a woman a, a soloist woman is danced with by multiple men but i could not tell you a hundred songs in which a soloist man is wooed by multiple women Mm-mm. uh it's there's not a one-to-one there are there are there's like um teen angel in greece where he he's like the heartthrob and then there's like a chorus of girls but they don't interact with him in the way that like this there are like a bunch of these type of songs where it's like girl multiple men yeah i guess it's it yeah and the man there's often numbers where there are women that are like ornamentation for the man and maybe they want him but he's not wooed by them maybe is Gaston that just, is guess. that just like because of our cultural <laughs> expectation go. that like the man does the wooing and therefore like you you would see a lot of men pursuing one woman but you're not gonna you don't see women pursuing men is like not was not oh, like probably the heterosexual code so to but speak. I just even was thinking about like I mean even the like Jerry Herman ones where it's like elderly woman <laughs> It walks downstairs and is greeted and by a by bevy of waiters. Of <laughs> There's not like a similar like man walks down. Well, men don't walk There's downstairs. There's also something. Yeah, men can't walk downstairs famously. But also I think that <laughs> there's something like gross about Joe a Biden man. Joe Biden can't. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Again, we don't need oh, anyone no. to know the t- moment in time that we're filming this. <laughs> recording this. Kate Middleton uh, is still missing everybody. Oh, oh, by the way, Kate what? Middleton is not. Oh, my. We don't know Molly. Molly, what? I will send She's oh, recovering Molly. from surgery. This was known, wasn't it? Yeah, her BBL, oh, yeah. So you believe Stop. that. You believe that. Okay. <laughs> Molly, I will happily send you many. There is Reddit threads that you can go down. Kate Middleton okay. has not been seen in public She's since been October. In public. Okay, but I thought that I, I'm sorry. I thought that she was like kidnapped. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we don't know, Molly. <laughs> no, she had they, surgery in that. January. This was known, right? That's what they say. That's what they tell you. Okay, I don't okay, care. I want to get back to the musical. Yeah, I can't believe I'm saying that about 42nd Street. But <laughs> hey. I think yeah. the reason, Adam, that we don't have equivalent numbers is that a man who's like a womanizer is like a known thing that is like gross and like people probably have a bad association with but there's less of a there's less of a real association with a woman who has like a series of men that she's going out with like you know what i mean i think it's just that it's like not as fun when it's a guy and women yeah 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 we love yeah. women that's what we we're love saying women yeah women <laughs> stories matter Women's stories matter. They just matter. Yeah. I also just um, want to point out that in this musical, it, this number, she does not like one of these men. And that's another thing that it leaves you with a little yeah. mystery of, of like, what did that guy do? She's happy to have a bunch of them, but then like one guy every time he comes up in the lineup, she's like, but not you. Not the, this one. The man in this shot right here on the screen in front of you, this man who has his ar- his legs over her and she pushes him off. Yeah. Yeah. This man later goes on to be in Reefer Madness and uh-huh. he plays like the very iconic like super high like baked guy in that movie. Are you being There's serious? One, I'm being one 100% guy that you can describe serious. that way? How do you Madness? know that? I read it on imdb.com trivia okay. section. Can you fast forward to the end of this number to the Gandhi? Yeah, let's get the shots. Yeah, let's get the Gandhi. Oh, that part. Situation. Oh, to Gandhi, <laughs> yeah. Deus Ex Gandhi. Listeners, that's the voice of Gandhi. Or Jesus? Well, I think it's supposed to be Gandhi. I mean, the glasses make me think Gandhi, but why? Was Gandhi even like a famous figure at this point in history? He was alive until like the 40s, right? So I thought that the 40s was when he rose to like enough prominence that the West would even know about him. But I'm saying. Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, what was what were the Google hits on Gandhi in 1933? <laughs> what are the statistics? We'll have to go on Internet Archive for that. Okay, struggle for Indian and uh, struggle for Indian independence. It says on Wikipedia was is 1915 through 1947. So I guess he was probably famous yeah, enough in 33. 
I did not think that was where this discussion would take us. <laughs> That's showgaze, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to. Okay. Um, finally, let's play a little bit of 42nd Street. Um, I did not choose a part that's Busby because there's no singing during the part and yeah. it's just music. Um, so I chose her like little solo at the beginning, which starts it out. Come and meet those dancing feet on the avenue. I'm taking you to 42nd Street. Here the beat of dancing feet. It's the song I love, the melody of 42nd Street. Little nifties from the fifties, innocent and sweet. Sexy ladies from the eighties who are indiscreet. All oh, the side by side, they're glorified. Where the underworld can be the elite, 42nd Street. Yeah, I just want to say, like, this woman is not a strong enough singer to be the only chorus girl that could have t- stepped into the role. This. I'm sorry, like, if you're gonna tell me that that's the plot, is how she's the only one can do it, she has to be blowing me away in this number. She has a great rehearsal but, scene where she's tapping super. Oh, and we get this too. But Ginger's line is in that in when she's like you got to pick her she's like she's not that great of a she does couch it she says she's not an incredible singer but her she's not dancing a great singer. she doesn't know how to act at all but she's the only one who can take on this role what <laughs> maybe it's because she could dance she was the best dancer okay, the only like, wouldn't know it we I'm wouldn't sorry, know it Brandon. i know I'm i know sorry to i know your art form but like no <laughs> has ever been led by someone who is in it because they're the best dancer like being the best dancer means you're the they're did lead you in the see chorus. thoroughly modern millie no, i'm just kidding i'm just kidding oh, <laughs> i'm just kidding. inspired at sutton foster i sutton said no, why am i understudy I'm turned sorry to- Ben Foster is this show. She was the understudy who then ended up winning a Tony. If, you're, if you're an amazing That's dancer and joke. what if you're an amazing dancer and what you want is to be the star of a show, go into dance. If you're going to be in musicals, you are not going to be cast as the lead because you're the best dancer. It's just not how it works. Well, we've really discussed this film, haven't we? We sure have. We look right at 90 minutes. And we're right at 90 minutes. Brandon, do you need to depart? No, we're good. Okay. We'll finish out. Um, Okay. I realized as we were recording just now that I did not pull criticism. So give me one second. Well, we already had Molly, so we don't, I don't think we need any more. I don't think we need any more. It's, there you go. Okay. Are there sometimes for these films? I'm like, are there criticisms? <laughs> for this long uh, ago, it can be hard to find. I feel like. Okay, so uh, this movie. Let me see if it even does. It even have a Rotten Tomatoes score? Oh, that would be good. I'm sure it does. Um, and we're all about to be very surprised at what it is. I have a feeling. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm surprised. It is 96% on Rotten no, Tomatoes. No, it's not. You're lying. It is 96% and an audience score of 74. Wow. That's what generous. Movie, where are you watching, everyone? <laughs> uh, Mordent Hall of the New York Times called the film invariably entertaining and the liveliest and one of the most tuneful screen musical Li- comedies that has come out of Hollywood. Liveliest. <laughs> it's so tuneful. It's incredibly tuneful. All four. Tuneful. All three songs are very tuned. It's tuneful in the last 12 minutes. Variety said, every element is professional and convincing. That's how I want my film to be. I think it's, I think it's important to note movie. that some of these, like, these reviews were recent. <laughs> oh, I'm just looking on the Wikipedia page. So these are all the old reviews. These are all the contemporary reviews for when the movie came out because i'll tell you the second line of this variety review it'll socko the screen musical fans with the same degree that metro's pioneering screen musicals did no one in 2019 said that bitch socko no you're right socko the screen um yeah it's uh yeah i mean critics loved it critics loved it you know what's not to love except for what we discussed 
However, <laughs> the regular people leaving reviews on letterbox.com in the 21st century have the different takes. Uh, there are three popular reviews for this movie on letterbox.com, which is the lowest I've ever seen. <laughs> Sophie, but, yeah, give them. Sophie B gave it four stars and said, a thing I like about these movies is that the stage productions they are putting on don't seem to make any fucking sense at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I honestly haven't heard Molly Sin- synopsis but okay that's fine no excuse patrick willems gave it three and a half three and a half stars and said every five minutes quote oh this is where that trope comes from <laughs> mm-hmm. and david sims uh what he writes for the he's a reviewer for the atlantic on his letterbox account gave it four stars and said this movie really goes hard on philadelphia <laughs> <laughs> also which you noted i noted um do you have the imdb i want to find these these one these one-liners can oh, i can i read those. a few more since they're so short yeah yeah yeah. uh both and neither gave it three stars and said musical shit at the end beats ass at least <laughs> beats ass <laughs> beats <Yeah>. ass <laughs> wow uh, i'm sorry quote. rita <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> sorry rita <laughs> Oh, that's right. Okay, in the audition in the beginning when they make fun of this girl like reads Anne and she goes, it must have been hard on your mother not having any children. <laughs> oh, oh that, was so that was so good. Great. That was that so, was so funny. We got a snap for that snap one. For that. Yeah. The library was open. That literally yeah. was like, that's Capote, bitch. Ooh, sick burn. I was with a group of kids today that were being very annoying and they kept saying that people were roasting each other and then I was like, do you know what? Roasts are supposed to be funny, so none of what any of you have said have been roast. Damn. And and it did, they, it did get them to stop for a while. <laughs> it sounds like you were roasting. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, oh, there's another one where Ann Lowell drunkenly hiccups and says, excuse me, it's the tight shoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, great. there was one up. There was oh. a Lorraine one. Or she says something about Lorraine. Jerry said, oh, no, it's one of the guys. It seems that Lorraine's hit the bottle again. Yeah, the peroxide bottle. <laughs> great. Is that a joke about her hair? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. Okay. That's how I interpreted it. Yeah. It, it was, was grand, grand of you to come. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. Okay. Um, let's talk about our MVPs. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go first. I'm going to take mine. I don't yeah. think anybody else is going to say it anyway. Uh, I'm going to give it to specifically for the one-liners, I'm going to give it to the screenplay of Ryan James and James Seymour. Now, I know that the rest of the screenplay is bad because we don't know the plot. <laughs> but really, that could be the book problem. That they and What are you going to do? You know what I mean? You're stuck with this book. What are you going to adapt it? Um, so I'm just going to give it to them, but only for those lines that made me laugh mm-hmm. because they were my favorite part of the movie. Um, I'll go real quick too. My MVP is Warner Brothers. Um, I think they... <laughs> this was really the Barbie of its day. This was the Barbie of its day. Oh and they God, didn't, it. <laughs> they did, this was their everything ever all at once. They had no idea the risk that they were going to take with Gosh. such a movie movie and it, it hit it off, it off. So, and you know good for them that they were able to uh revitalize their business through this revitalize movie. Mm. <laughs> brandon we'll save you for last molly <laughs> Please. um i'm gonna get my mvp to the shoes bit in shuffle, shuffle off to buffalo <laughs> <laughs> the horny shoes. the horny shoes the horny shoes my mvp are the horny shoes <laughs> sorry rita um brandon brandon you do have to pick the correct MVP. <laughs> Is there one that you've sa- saved for me? Yes. Yes. The only, the one, only performance one performance. The only that performer we all that liked. we said was good. <laughs> Of a f- person who is quite famous and in fact oh, was in yeah, another okay. movie that you I was I was <laughs> going to you can say Busby Berkeley if you want. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. I had a few that I was like circulating. I was thinking Busby Berkeley. I was definitely thinking Ginger as as any time. I almost said Ado Annie, but anytime Annie. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I was I was actually gonna say the like the the tummy belly line. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't know that. why. It, that, there's like Kevin, very that, few that, things that, I, like, that I just like specifically remembered. I'm, honestly, her delivery of that is so good that the the it's realization that you can't. I don't know if it was like a mistake that they yeah. just didn't catch in the dailies and yeah. like moved on. Yeah, or, or if, like, if it that's was a actually bit. the joke. Yeah, a bit. I don't because, know. Like, but I'm gonna say that, which does kind of encapsulate all of her. what we just said. So yeah, perfect. That that line perfect. is my MVP. Molly. 
I'd love to know what your closer is this week. I'd love to tell you what my closer is this week. Pick a modern musical that we've watched on this podcast that you think would benefit from a Busby Berkeley number. <gasps> oh. oh. If you could bring him back from the grave and say, I need you to direct one scene in this musical, yeah. what would it be? I can tell you the only thing. Yeah. I'm, where's the camera? Right here. That I'm no one will see. because The, the only bad. thing that would have saved Cats 2019. <gasps> That's what I was going to say. Is Busby fucking Berkeley coming back from the dead to direct yep. it. Yep. 100%. I was prepping for this closer and I opened up the planning doc to review the po- the, the and you ones saw the that we have done one. and I saw the first one, Cats, and thought, that's it. Yeah. And everyone else will forget that we even did it because it was so long ago. But Adam, yeah. you and I... We know. Well, because originally I was going to say Les Mis, and then I was like, Whoa, no, I got to go. I got to go the other Tom Hooper. Yeah. Yes. I think Hooper needs a little workshop on Busby. Oh, hmm. yes. Just a Busby master class. <laughs> like a little lovely ladies moment, but with, with the Busby Berkeley, <laughs> oh <my> like, God. <laughs> tower, the tower of women. Tower of women. Offensive. <laughs> offensive. <laughs> We should definitely do Footlight as a next as a. I'm sure it'll be just as good as this. <laughs> um, uh, Brandon. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh you no. Last okay. I'll go last. You've never seen a musical. Do you want me to chat you the? Musical. Do you want me to chat you the list? Oh, I've got it. Back? Okay. He's got Spotify open, bitch. Oh, okay. Scrolling through those names. This house uses Apple Podcasts. Thank oh, you very that's much. Right there in Apple. Yeah. Yeah. I use Pocket Casts. Yeah. Yes, you're so quirky mm-hmm. like yeah, that. So yes. weird, I mean, actually, I actually use Castro, but it's fine. Uh, um, I'm actually going to go with Across the Universe. Mm-hmm. I think she threw everything in there. Why yeah. not throw Miss Busby in? Absolutely. Sure. Try one more and thing. Try one more. <laughs> See if that makes it good. <laughs> you know, people always think the Coco Chanel <laughs> quote is take one thing off, but it's actually Put add one, one more on. thing. What, what Julie Taymor said more was add, more, add, one add one more Busby. Add one more thing. Add yeah. more Busby. <laughs> yeah. Busby, because he could have, she could have had a, Busby could have had a great like psychedelic, yeah, moment that I think would be really. Somebody cool. said one of the things that it was like saying that like his style was, like, uh, what's the thing where you turn it, kaleidoscope? Yes, kaleidoscope. Kaleidosco- kaleidoscopic, yeah. blah, 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 yeah. other stuff uh, like ge- geometric, blah blah blah, and also yeah. macabre. And I was like, what macabre? Huh. They don't know what <laughs> that I, word means. <laughs> but I guess because. I don't think that's the right word either, but they were, I think like they were Caligari, like, like very like, he likes to do the like thing where there's like a bunch of their faces and the, like it happened in this movie too, where it was just like, uh, their faces were, were like swirling, swirling around. Kafka. Yeah, maybe like, Kafka. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, metamorphosis, bitch. Metamorphosis, absolutely. Yes, yeah, 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 so yeah. Brandon, I have one more I want to throw out there. If Please. you're still thinking, Grease oh. too. Oh. I'll say one that we're gonna I'm score sh- tonight as a Busby <laughs> Berkeley. <laughs> I'll say one the that bowling I'm ball swirling have a Busby Berkeley reference because I think this director is a student of Busby Berkeley in some yeah. capacity. I'm surprised Newsies didn't have a Busby moment. Yes, it that's feels a good like point. The, the movie that could have done that. And oh, you think I Miss think, Kenny Ortega can be the next I think Busby? You Berkeley? need girls. You need girls for a Busby yeah. Berkeley moment, and Newsies doesn't have girls. I think that's the, the thing. Mine, yeah. Mine's gonna be uh, the the very recently reviewed Mean Girls 2024. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Because. Famously, the songs are not great in that musical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they were doing this like dream other space thing with the musical yes. number, so you can really throw in whatever you can throw in genre you want there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I actually was gonna throw Color Purple. Like I, Whoa. there could have been no in the in the like in the Shug in the mm. Shug scenes, mm. like the dream sequence that they have of like their love song. That if like they went, it was only a little. Me. It, it was, was already. I mean, it was already era. a little. Yeah, that yeah. I was like, maybe it's something there. I just think Berkeley is like, there's a lightheartedness to it that like yeah. just doesn't go with the color purple's tone. <laughs> really, you don't think Busby Berkeley should direct? <laughs> have, y'all done, have y'all done nine yet? Yes, yeah. we have yes, done famously, nine. Brandon, famous. we've done thanks nine. So thanks for listening show. to the show. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I didn't I did also do nine. Anyways, <laughs> did you like nine? Me? Yeah. yeah. I just like the musical numbers. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Brandon hates women is what he's saying. Yeah. Well, you'll feel right into the show, girl. Yeah. That's why I'm here. That's why she's here. That's why I started listening. <laughs> That's 
that's how I sound more. this podcast. Nobody <laughs> loves to hate women like gay men do. Nobody <laughs> likes to hate women like a podcast about movie musicals. <laughs> yes. Specializing in the oldest ones ever. <laughs> So no more 30s musicals from here on out, right? That's a rule. I just rule. want to be invited back in a different know. decade. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Like, give me a... Well, the girls well, need to I make looked, dance movies? I looked at the... Because re- there was some confusion about if we were going to be able to do this because of, like, scheduling and stuff. So I was looking at our calendar of, like, oh, okay, what other dance musicals are we doing this year? And I was like, not a one. <laughs> not <laughs> a single yes. one. I don't know if we can reveal, but I saw one on there that would be Which solid. One? Can I just say it? Yeah. Yeah. All that jazz. That was the one that I thought about today when I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, it is a fossil. I'm also guessing I'm gonna I'm gonna obscure this the June fifteenth. I'm guessing that there's a lot of dance not based on just uh, Is that the YMCA one? Uh no, I think it's a I think it's a Bollywood, isn't it? It's the Bollywood. Oh, it's the Bollywood one. Yeah. I'm not on the document right now. Oh, okay. We also could have had you on for American in Paris and we failed to do so. So that's okay. That was Even two, after I think that made was, that whole explanation about how I wasn't a Ginger fan, I was a you were Gene a, Kelly fan. Yeah. I was like a Gene Kelly, not a Fred. Uh, well, it's so sad okay. that we've only, we've already seen the two movies that Gene Kelly has made ever. So yeah, yeah. we're not ever going to do another Gene Kelly, left. unfortunately. Yeah. No, we've never we've seen three because we also watched um, Xanadu. Oh, Xanadu. <laughs> His famous three, his three, his, his three red films? curtain trilogy. Yeah, yeah his own yeah, trilogy. Yeah, his yeah. glitter cycle. His glitter cycle. <laughs> she goes glitter cycle. Okay, that's enough of this. That's enough. RJ, take it away. I got to be a habit with me. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the best revival of a podcast, Showgaze. You can find us on social media. Adam is at Adam Noecker on Twitter. RJ is at RJ Food Rocks on Instagram. And Molly is at Molly Matiny on Instagram. This episode was edited and mixed by Adam Noecker. This has been an Ampliverse production. You can find our show page and more information at theampliverse.com. If you'd like to send us your own takes on the movie we just watched, reach out to us via email and we might read it aloud on the show. Our email is showgazemoviemusical at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your podcasts. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to help others find the show. And now, as always, the show must go on. So stick around to hear what we're going to be watching next episode. I know what they say about me. About hopeless romantics. That we're weak. And I'm not weak. I learned the hard way. Not all love stories have a happy ending. Time's up. Let's pick this back up next week. I just wanna... What are you guys doing here? Just... We think you might be a sex addict. Every time I see you. What? Maybe. Third time's the charm? This guy don't stand a chance. This is me. Haven't been sleeping well lately. I guess I never have. When I was little, I used to share a room with my sister. She used to sleep so peacefully. This is me. And I just used to lie there awake thinking, how does anybody sleep that way when your heart never goes to sleep? I know. You feel like nobody gets you. I don't even get me. It's never enough for you. He's a liar. I've never lied to you. And the constant criticism? She thinks I'm her employee. This is me. Being with you feels like home. But I left home for a reason. Whenever someone asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, my answer was always in love. Must respect the ebb and flow of the universe. This is me. This is me now. Discovering voices, building worlds. The 
Ampliverse.